Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Sophia, your host. We continue our series called How Will I Know? Last week, we looked at some mathematical patterns found in the Quran that seem to point to the Quran as the Word of God. This week, we delve deeper, exploring patterns found in the number of chapters, letters, words, and overall structure of the Quran. Joining me is Dr. Shabir Ali, our resident scholar and also my dad. Dr. Shabir Ali, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. It's my pleasure to be on. Now, we've been looking at mathematical patterns as evidence of the Quran being uh, authored by God, right? So we want to continue that series today. We want to we want to talk a little bit more, go, get, delve a little bit deeper uh, to find out what other mathematical patterns you've been able to find in the Quran that you find convincing. So maybe you can share with us uh, something of that. Yeah, I should confess that much of what I'm sharing is not what I myself have personally discovered, but uh, it's mainly the discoveries of others. Uh, but uh, given the history of this whole phenomenon, I have tried to the best of my ability to um, verify what I'm going to present and to present only what I've verified. Uh, so th there are some studies that are so complex that uh, I don't even have the capacity to verify them. Like when it comes to counting the number of letters uh, in, a, in a passage in the Quran, because uh, Arabic for me uh, is, I'm still a student of the language. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't uh, venture to claim uh, that uh, ability uh, to, to perform some of these counts myself. Uh, so I basically start with what others have done and, and I try to verify to the best of my ability. So having said that, um, uh, in a previous episode, we spoke about the correspondence of words in the Quran, which are contrasting words, and they occur an equal number of times in, in, in the Quran. Uh, that's not to say that all words are like that, but where, they, where this contrast does uh, appear, and we have this symphony of numbers, uh, we, we see this as uh, a verification that this is a revelation from the Almighty God. And mm -hmm. one uh, that is very striking is the, the contrast between uh, Adam and Jesus. Uh, these two names have been contrasted in the Christian New Testament. Jesus is said to be the new Adam. And um, in the Quran, in the, seventh, in the third chapter, in the 59th verse, it says in the example of Jesus in the sight of God is uh, uh, like the example of Adam. God created him, the latter it seems, uh, from clay and then said to him, be, and he was. So the Quran seems to be indicating by this that Jesus is a creature of God just like Adam is a, is a creature of God. Now, now that's the message and that's what really matters for, and has mattered for, for, for Muslims for 1400 years. But what is interesting now from the mathematical point of view is to discover that the two names, Jesus and Adam, occur in the Quran exactly 25 times each. And uh, they don't always occur together. Uh, some chapters of the Quran mention Jesus but do not mention Adam. Some other chapters mention Adam but do not mention Jesus. Um, it turns out that uh, when the two names occur together in that one passage I just recited, that's the seventh time each name is occur has occurred in the Quran. And remember our interest from the previous episode in things occurring in the Quran in multiples of seven. Uh, it, now, uh, after this mention, uh, where they occur together, they don't occur again in the same chapter until they converge in the 19th chapter of the Quran. So here's the recurrence of 19, which sparked our interest in our previous episode. Uh, and uh, where they occur together if, uh, in the 19th chapter of the Quran, this is the 19th time that each name is mentioned. Mm -hmm. Now, it is interesting that because each name is mentioned 25 times uh, in, in the Quran, uh, the, the 7 and 19 play out in a different way. See, the numbers from 1 to 25 themselves are such that if you were to write the numbers in sequence, 1, 2, 3, up to 25, and then below that, start with 1, write all the way back to to 25 this way, you would see that the 7 and 19 uh, are in the same column, and again the 19 and the 7 are in the same column. And what this means, uh, in, in, in effect, is that uh, the seventh time Jesus is mentioned in the Quran is the 19th time from the rear of the Quran. And the 19th time Jesus is mentioned in the Quran, that's the seventh time from the rear of the Quran. Mm -hmm. And that applies for Adam as well, the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it goes deeper than this. Uh, if we were to say, okay, how many verses transpire from the seventh mention uh, of, of Adam to the 
19th mention of Adam in the Quran. So we're, we're going, we're traversing many passages. We're going through to the end of Surah 3, all of Surah 4, 5, 6, all the way to Surah 19, where Adam is mentioned. We will see that the total number of verses in that whole stretch is 1957, which is uh, a multiple of 19. It's 19 times 103. Now, if we're curious, we go further to find out uh, where are the verses where Jesus is mentioned for the first 19 times. We'll find that the total of those verse numbers as well is 1957. It's the same number, 1957, mm -hmm. which turns out to be 19 times 103. Now, one who is not familiar with the theory of probability and, and is not very mathematically inclined may think that, well, you know, this is just coincidence. But we have to remind uh, people that uh, coincidences like this uh, are not easy to, to come by. Uh, you see, the, the, word, the, 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 the number 1957 is a four-digit number. Um, once you come across it by whatever means, okay, so we wanted to add or to subtract, or we found it by some, some means. Let's say we contrived that means we found 1957. Mm -hmm. It's not very likely that by a simple contrivance you're going to come up with this number again, because this is a four-digit number, and uh, there are 9,000 four-digit numbers altogether, starting from 1,000 and uh, uh, 1,000 all the way to 9,999. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so, so if we put all these numbers in a bag and picked one, it's hardly likely it's going to be 1,957. Mm -hmm. So if we reach 1,957 by the first contrivance, it's hard to reach it again by either adding or subtracting or dividing or something like this. And what we have seen is that just simply adding up the verse numbers where Jesus is mentioned for the first 19 times, uh, the verse numbers come up to the same number, 1957, which turns out to be 19 times 103. Mm -hmm. Even to but here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a bit of a cynic, so I'm going <laughs> to ask you some questions. Um, yeah. So you found this pattern, but how many other patterns are there like this? And, you know, how many, it seems like most of the Quran doesn't follow these, these patterns. True. Right? Uh, true. Uh, so so it the, could be a coincidence then. Um, of course, but the, the one by itself. But uh, when we see the number of coincidences of this nature that are there in the Quran, uh, it, it becomes phenomenal. It, it becomes hard to credit all of this to coincidence. And we'll go mm -hmm. deeper and deeper as much as time will permit and the interest of our, of our viewers mm -hmm. uh, will allow and, and the nature of our discussion because some things uh, for, you need presentation software for, mm -hmm. you need a chalkboard, you need a classroom setting, and you need people who are mathematically inclined. To, to appreciate some of the depth and complexity of this. Uh, but uh, if we think of the patterns of 7 and 19, these are recurring in the Quran. And uh, the, the number of occurrences and the levels of complexity, here we've been dealing with uh, both the uh, 19 and 7 actually coinciding. And so that adds another level of complexity to the whole uh, arrangement. Uh, but then I, I, think, I think it would be more compelling if there was a, a significance to the numbers. So, you know, if these numbers that you're mentioning, seven, I, I, I see that it has more of a significance, but 19, What's the, what's the significance in Islam? Well, that, no, no, that one knows, no one knows the, the actual significance of 19, uh, but uh, it is interesting that the 19 is mentioned in the Quran in the 74th chapter, in the 30, 30th verse. Uh, it speaks about uh, uh, hell and says, Alayha tisata ashar, over it are 19. And interpreters have taken this to mean that there are 19 angels guarding hell. Um, but then why 19? The, the next verse, the 31st verse of that surah, uh, says that, God has only mentioned this number in order to uh, strengthen the faith of the believers and uh, to give certainty to the people of the scripture, people who uh, were reading a scripture before this. Uh, and uh, one wonders, like, how does the mention of 19 do anything like this? How does it strengthen the faith of the believers? Uh, so what uh, um, has been discovered now is that there are such intricate patterns of 19 in the Quran that this actually does strengthen the faith of the believers now in our modern uh, times, even if uh, for a long time people would have asked why 19 and what is the meaning of this 19? Mm -hmm. We have time for maybe one more pattern, so can you share something with us? Well. Uh, yeah, without going too deeply, because uh, we want to proceed in, in stages, uh, but uh, 
uh, and, and to keep it short as well. Uh, in my debate with Richard Lucas uh, about this in the United Kingdom, I, I mentioned that uh, there, there is a pattern um, uh, relating to the shortest surah of the Quran, which says, Inna tainak al kawthar. The Muslims who are viewing this would probably know the whole thing from memory. There are 10 words in this uh, surah, and um, uh, that, that's the shortest surah of the Quran. It turns out uh, that uh, this uh, surah comprises 42 letters altogether, which is a product of seven, is seven times six. Um, now, the, uh, of the 28 letters of the uh, Arabic alphabet, 17 are used, which is a prime number uh, in this surah, and that means 11 are not used, which is also a prime number. Uh, only one letter of the alphabet, the alif, is used 10 times. There are 10 words. Uh, one letter is used 10 times, and uh, there are 10 letters which are used once. Mm -hmm. So what you see is that there is a symphony of numbers, that, that certain numbers occur again and again, even within that uh, short surah of the Quran. It is short, it is sweet, it is packed with meaning, very instructive for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and for Muslims that come after him, and yet there is this symphony uh, of, of numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that when, we, when the Quran is written, some letters can either be inserted or not. So, for example, alif or wow. So, so how does that, I mean, that would definitely change the count. Yes. So these counts are based on uh, what we refer to and what academics refer to as the 1924 Cairo edition of the Quran. Uh, this uh, has become now an academic standard and has become a standard text that is read by Muslims throughout the world, reprinted in Medina uh, by King Fahad printed, uh, Printing Complex, and hence is referred to also as the Medina Quran or the King Fahad Quran. Uh, but, uh, it is the one that is most widely used by Muslims throughout the world. And, and it is this text that we're using as the standard for counting all of the details. So when we count an aleph in there and we're saying 10 uses of the aleph, that's the one we're counting. All right, we'll have to leave it at that. Thank you, Dr. Shabir Ali, for sharing with us these mathematical patterns. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Hey, YouTube. We hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.